Hey guys, Chris Cohen here, and we all saw this coming, right? The Overwatch Kiriko cinematic had over half a million views in like 10 days or something, which is super sick. And within it, you guys said that we absolutely need to make an episode on Overwatch Wastelander cinematic. Now, make sure you guys check out the brand new Filmmaker merch that I just dropped in my brand website, Gorilla Filmmaker. And it's by far the best way to support episodes like this and the channel while at the same time get some really cool custom stuff that I designed for you guys. With that said, I have a really cool video program for you guys to check out that is super user friendly, has powerful features and enhanced performance, the all new Wondershare Uniconverter 14 that has brought to you today's episode. Uniconverter 14 is an all-in-one video toolbox with an insane array of features such as converting media files across 1000 video formats with one click, simple, modern and intuitive control settings, editing features like trim, change speed, remove clips and so on. But one of my favorite ones is the brand new AI lab features that include things like noise removal, vocal removal to separate the music and vocals, auto crop for social media sharing of clips, the smart trimmer which basically does the job for you and it removes any part of the video that nothing is really happening, and a lot lot more. So here's the gist of it at the end of the day. If you want an all-in-one video toolbox that has great features, modern and extremely user-friendly setup, so that you can easily and with speed make your videos way better to share across any platform and social media, then this is it. Oh and yeah, like I told you guys, it's free to try. So click my link in the description to check Wondershare Uniconverter 14 and have it downloading in the background while we fire up YouTube and check out the Wastelander cinematic. YouTube, full screen in one, two, three. <laughs> Destroy the world. <laughs> you as a kid, I'm guessing? What? I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. Did she just break the fourth wall? That was sick. Please Entertainment presents. I think she broke the fourth wall. That's when like a character speaks to us like directly. But here I am. A free for all. With zero rules. That's very borderlandsy. I like it. Like an arena. Why does every time the guy on top is like fat and like whatever? Has never lost, not in 13 years of rule. Okay, she is talking to us for the second time. Not until today. It sounds Australian AF. That's pretty cool. Did you really think this would be a fair fight? I won't survive the reckoning unless the winner grants your mercy. Mate, the action is sick, but I've got to win this whole I'm a bit taken off by the fact that she's talking to me. It it breaks the fourth wall and it's a bit like it's taking you a bit out of the action. That was sick though. Come on, let's go. That's a pretty sick shot. That was badass. KO. Nice. The thing is, I don't feel that she's 
in much danger because of the talking to us bit. Classic. Why are you smart enough to run the team? Why are you working for this stronger? That is really cool, though. Not you being bitter. Can she call anything metal? At least I wouldn't shoot my friends in the back. Nice. She's a bit OP though. Because they're stronger than you. You haven't had a real fight. In 13 years, we have done every bloody day. I love that effect, man. That's really cool. Oh, he does the same thing. I don't like the talking to us part, man. Are they gonna be on her side because she like didn't kill them and kind of like saved them? Yeah. Nice. You idiot! I'll kill you for that. No, not today. Yeah, come on. Nice. Let's go, Thor. I mean, classic. Mercy. It's Overwatch after all. I'll give you the same mercy you showed my family 13 years ago. Oh, it was the same guy. Get out of my city. So if you win the arena, you own the city. Logo transition. Yes. Okay. Oh. Oh, same thing. With a bottle of water, though. That's nice. Good luck. I have a lot of thoughts. But first of all, let's like this cinematic, like this video as well, guys. It always helps. And there we go. Is that it? Yes. Cool. Um, I'm a bit conflicted because animation-wise, quality-wise, the action, the cinematography, everything that was going on, it's top-notch Overwatch, which is awesome. And he had... 
way more of a like um complex fight scene and just like the sheer number of like details that were going on compared to Kiriko but at the same time I uh, Kiriko left me feeling way more enthusiastic and like excited about the whole thing and I want to go back and like recheck the scene where like the music drops and everything goes down this one I couldn't get as into it and I think the primary reason is the fact that they're constantly through the entire cinematic they are breaking the fourth wall what that means, the fourth wall basically, is that when something within a medium we consume, in this case a cinematic video, film, uh, breaks the fourth wall by turning into the lens, staring right at us and talking to us directly. When that happens, it instantly breaks the immersion we have with the film and usually something else needs to happen to go back, right back in it so that we lose ourselves within the story once more. A great example of that would be um, Deadpool with Ryan Reynolds. He did a great job of balancing that out. Well, he gave us extremely funny humor by breaking the fourth wall and saying things like Hugh Jackman and this, this and that, or like Xavier and things like this, or like being like, where is all the other X-Men? Oh. I guess 20th century Fox didn't have enough budget and things like this that are really funny but he was breaking the fourth wall but he was able to bring that back in and we lose ourselves in the story and the characters again even though he did that in this one I couldn't go I couldn't immerse myself all the way because of that reason and I'm wondering what you guys think of that how did you feel uh, by the fact that the main character was breaking the fourth wall and talking to you and me directly because uh, I wasn't a big fan. I feel that if they didn't do that, the cinematic would have worked just as well as it did, but even more because I would not feel that I'm not immersed or believing the what is going on as much because also she felt a bit, because she was like, in the action, she would get hit, but then she would turn back and talk to me. I didn't feel that she was in any kind of like danger or taking taking the situation seriously. And therefore, I couldn't, and us as the audience, couldn't take the situation seriously either. That's the overall sensation I got from this. Again, guys, you know, the team over at Blizzard uh, that's in charge of making these animations, whatever. Probably, maybe different teams, different people walking across. Again, very... Good job, guys. It takes so much skill to bring something like this to life, and they deserve a like for that. But um, let's go back in and kind of like break it down as we always do in the second part of Filmmaker Reacts and kind of like see some really cool stuff that they did, discuss some other things that maybe didn't work, and overall have a blast about filmmaking stuff because this is what we do. So let's go press zero on the keyboard, go right back at the beginning. Full screen again, why not? And let's press play. So... The opening is really nice. I like the opening that they open up with, in this case, I guess. It's not a memory, it's a dream. And the way that the character wakes up, I would say more of a nightmare dream slash memory. Um, but it's really cool because the way they did this is... If you were to replicate this with the camera and the lens, you would film something, but then... They make some really cool choices here where the center of the frame is somewhat in focus, but everything else, it's called basically radial blur effect, is a blur that you have a center or any point in the screen that you want to attach that's a blur, but everything throughout that point just flares out and blurs out directionally from the center. In this one, you can see, you see the characters in the center and we they're quite somewhat in focus, especially her as a kid and then everything flares out with that radial blur effect. Actually, After Effects it has the exact same effect. You can set it up and put it to um, zoom, and it creates that really nice kind of like boom. This gives us the sensation that this is not really clear, and this is usually what dreams are. You know how like when you try to remember dreams, they're kind of like hazy? This is what it tries to replicate, but this is also a really cool effect to do. Exactly the same if a character gets hit and they're disoriented. Same stuff, really cool. They have a nice haze as well for the 
wasteland. Let the wasteland deal with them. And now we are introduced to the character kind of like sleeping or resting, so we're like, oh yeah, that character is dreaming. It's cool. We see her weapon. Go even uh, more zoomed in, but again, they have uh, RGB separation. You can see in this guy, the father, you can see like how he, his RGB colors are being splitted. Really cool. And as we flare out towards the edges of the composition in the frame, it becomes even more and more. Really cool. Really cool effect. Boom. Of course, eyes opening, quick sequence of knife. And here we have what? it, the first uh, fourth wall break. I'm not allowed to have a bad dream. <laughs> he takes me out of it, man. This is real. That's my favorite thing. We should talk about this because that is sick, right? So, boom, summoning weapons. It's just one of the coolest things you can do, right? So, boom, here, gauntlet goes out. We have little lightning sparks and the thing moves on. Ah, oh, sick. Unfortunately, the only way to replicate this is with 3D animation, and um, that is quite tricky to do, but that doesn't mean you can do something else that's not as technical as that, or has the same impact, but it's quite close, and that is, if you want to summon weapons, basically what you do is you film it in reverse, and with sound design, you fake it. So basically, let's say I have a lightsaber in my hand, if I throw it out, but and then we put it on reverse, and then the exact next cut is then it works and that's not what i want to do so full screen i like how they implemented the blizzard entertainment presents and the wastelander title that is pretty cool i always like it when a title is implemented within the world somehow um but yeah cool touch. so no Really cool scene, um, they give us a nice sensation of space and while we look up we see the arena basically and the characters standing in it and that's really cool. It really reminds me of Borderlands, I'm not gonna lie, especially how they introduce its character where they freeze the frame and they become kind of like cartoon versions with their name tags. So. Again, breaking the fourth wall. Not until today. By the way, if you're wondering, I had this realization recently, that's why I want to share this and seeing it here, even though this is animation and the camera and the lens is digital, um, it's actually the same thing. When you have the 21 by nine aspect ratio, the best lens, if you have to choose one lens to make this or something real or Final Fantasy VII Resurgence, the best lens to choose is a 35mm prime lens. f1.4, f1.8 if you have to, this gives you the best um, image from a singular lens that you can have that looks cinematic, but also you can compose things in a 21 by 9 ratio and have them look really sick. That's cool, the split screen. Very game-like. I love that. That That is really pretty to me. So you have the screens illuminating blue. There's a great color contrast based on everything warm, basically, like red tones, yellow tones, that kind of like wasteland um, color palette. But with hair hair having that teal blue and with those blue screens, we have a very pretty image because you have contrast of color. Of course, the composition of this being kind of like a semi-wide where we see the character and then what she's looking, but everything is so symmetrical, perfectly in the center with the opponent looking at them. And then at the sides, the other two that are not as important, but yet still are there. Really cool. Did you really think this would be a bad fight? Boom. And of course, action, Blizzard is epic with that. But again, see, that's my problem. I can't feel the pressure which i guess they didn't they were not going with that but i would really like it especially with the fight scene to just be 
enthralled in it versus taken out because the main character is like gives a punt so by the way i'm cool right you know what i mean unless the winner grabs your mercy oh, that's why i've got to win this this also reminds me of the fight between um, Thor and the Hulk in Thor Ragnarok? Yeah, Love and Thunder, Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok. Easily best Thor movie, I would say. But yeah, this reminds me of that as well. Let's get this started. Oh. Again, with this one, we're actually quite tight in the characters during the action. Um, and by that I mean we we don't get the sense of a super wide angle kind of like looking at the whole arena we're always quite tight on them even though both are in frame whether that is over the shoulder or like this kind of like <laughs> boom and that's all the fight scene is actually um in the final final fight seven resurgence uh, final fight it was actually shot across almost a month for four to five times having to go on location and start from the end point to then stitch all of those clips together in a coherent way uh, where the action makes sense but um, it was one of my fears because shooting a fight scene across four or five days in a period of a month creates quite a lot of issues continuity wise but anyways my point is a battle is always something that a lot of filmmakers or people that go into uh, video are afraid of because it seems quite impossible because of everything that's going on but actually what it is is you make a choreography you know that choreography and then you shoot it many times you shoot it as a wide, you shoot it from one character's perspective, you flip over, you shoot it from the other character's perspective. You have a special move happening, so you shoot a very specific scene for that. And then you take all of those clips and you cut, and you cut, and you cut, and you cut. That's how you make a fight scene. So, this is what they do here as well. Boom! That is a really cool shot. That's almost like having a GoPro stick with a GoPro here and kind of like follows the movement of the arm. That is a really cool perspective and something you don't see as often. So chops for creativity here. That's really cool. Uh, yeah, just like so bad. There, see, that's my problem, man. There's some really sick shots in this one. Really sick shots. It's just... It's not as impactful as it could be, and I think it's because of the fourth wall breaking. But I've said it so many times now that it's time for me to put it to rest. Really cool, slow motion. This is kind of like the same thing going on, they're just progressing through the fight. Why I'm saying this is because any fight, as in any story, needs to have a progression within it, and that's usually the fight starts give punches here or there, but then the character it, themselves need to have some form of growth within the fight. That's why you usually have a fight. It's not just like, oh, cool, let's have action, cool moves and stuff like that. That's all cool, but there's no substance behind that if the characters within it don't go through something. Um, and I feel here, again, it's just kind of like, I know she has it because... Creation-wise, they haven't given me a reason to doubt that. You know what I mean? Even though you usually you always know that the good guy will somehow find a way to win, but you know, it's cool to feel the thrill in it. So, really cool. Really freaking cool. As a bigger magnet? Really cool, really cool. That's my, that, I want to talk about that, because that is not sure physics-wise what's going on. I guess magnet versus more powerful magnet defrags every other thing, but artistic-wise, this is really cool. So, we have here, here, and 
she emits a lot of light and also the color of the light is blue and we have the other guy there and it's quite dark because the light emits from her but also he has orange um, form of energy forming around him as everything breaks apart and the cool thing is how we have the light here the darker part there how we have the blue here and the contrast with the orange there and those are all really cool choices that when once someone starts doesn't really keep in mind but if you actually start breaking things apart you can see that same things are used quite often across different projects oh. I love how close and the little glimpse they put at the tip of the axe blade and the eyes like right there. Mercy. <laughs> mercy. I'll give you the same mercy. The same mercy you showed my family 13 years ago. Get out of my city. My city. I wonder how this character interacts with the rest of the characters in Overwatch. Hmm. You. Cool. So, she won, she talks to us again, we have a cool kind of like, how do you call it, like a collage of like what the character is up to, it's pretty cool, I like that, that is cool because it's a great full circle, because the first opening of this cinematic was the flashback or dream or memory of her family with that same door um, being left abandoned, and here, we actually end the cinematic with the same thing a few years later, but with a bad guy in the spot of the family. And it's exactly the same, but with a, a substantial difference, I would say. She gives him a bottle of water and then casts, his, casts him out. But it's, it's a really nice circle of what was done to her is done to him, but with a small change. So it's not exactly the same. And yet, we end up in the same time, in the same point, situation, all of the above, see? Bye, bye, Miss American Pie. Why that song? Do not ask me. Okay, guys. So this was another Overwatch cinematic, cinematic, cinematic. Let me know what you guys thought of the cinematic and the breaking of the fourth wall uh, down in the comment section below. I'm pretty sure we agree that Kiriko was um, a way better one in terms of uh, execution and um, the overall sense that it leaves you with. Check out the Guerrilla Filmmaker store and the merch, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Until then, stay awesome and creative.